Well, after a whole lot of tearing down walls, sheetrocking, and then painting, we're finally ready for some railroading. Great to see you here on the main track. We appreciate you tuning in to join us today. It's of course been a few weeks in between videos as I've been continuing construction here on the layout room, so I definitely appreciate everyone's patience. As you can see here behind me, things are coming along. I even had this short section of the layout started. I'll show you that here in just a few seconds. But well, first up, we want to thank everybody for subscribing and following us here on the main track. And a big thanks to those joining the channel and lending extra support through our train crew membership. We have more details about that in our description. Well, for my MKT Sedalia subdivision layout, I'm still working on the track plan. Now, there's a few parts that are still up in the air, but one portion that's close enough to being settled is the general shape. After all, there's only so many ways you can stuff a layout into a room this size. So what I've done is I've built this shelf portion along the wall. As I mentioned in my last video, uh, the main wall in my room is 50 feet long. So I have this 25 foot section up. I have a lot of work left to go on the room itself, but I wanted a place where I could just run some trains back and forth and get some work started. So I got the bench work started and then I visited my friends over at Iron Planet Hobbies, picked up some flux track and some cork road bed and laid it all down. And then here you have it. This track right here was only temporary, as I mentioned, just a spot to run a train. So things will definitely look a lot different once I apply my track plan here and get everything installed. Now, for planning purposes, I'll be modeling about 50 miles of the Missouri, Kansas, Texas, Sedalia subdivision in West Central Missouri, uh, starting at a point just north of the city of Sedalia, then heading south through Clinton to Appleton City. Now, obviously, I don't have enough space in this 30 by 50 foot room, so I'm having to whittle down what I can include and deciding what I can't include when it comes to towns and features and things. Well, I am having to skip some towns along the way, so I'm choosing the places that stick out to me or had the most interesting features. Well, I'll, of course, be including the main city of Sedalia, which was the focus of my original layout. Heading south is the town of Green Ridge, which has this really neat grain elevator that I've always kind of liked and thought would make a great subject for modeling. I've actually already completed that model and have shown it in some previous episodes, but that will be going right here in Green Ridge. Now, after a bit of wrestling with the idea, I've decided to skip the town of Windsor. Now, that was a junction with the Rock Islands, Kansas City to St. Louis main line. Now, the bridge where the Katy crossed over the Rock Island is a point of interest, but the rock was out of service by the time frame I'm modeling, so there's no interchange going on at that point in time, and there really wasn't much in the way of industries along the Katy and Windsor. Now, if I were modeling seven years prior when the rock was still active, I'd definitely be including the town of Windsor. Well, the next community I'm hoping to include is Calhoun. It's a small spot that has a couple of interesting little grain elevators. There are also a couple of overpasses to add some visual interest and break things up. Local rail fan Ken Kaiser was perched on one of those bridges when he captured this video of a Katy train rolling through town around 1987. Well, as you can see here, it's a pretty small town, just the main line and a siding. I thought it would be pretty easy to model this. Well, then it's on to the town of Clinton. It's the other big town along the route I'm modeling. Now, this is where the bulk of the industry will be located. Now, I've covered Clinton in some previous videos. It's a town about half the size of Sedalia, but had a lot more industries served by the Katy during the 1987 timeframe I'm modeling. Now, the first part of the layout, the 35 some odd miles between Sedalia and Clinton, represents the main line that was abandoned by Union Pacific in 1989 about a year after it took over the Katy. Now, from Clinton southward, the tracks are still, to this day, in use by the Missouri and Northern Arkansas Railroad. Now, I've covered some of those modern-day operations in a video called Revisiting Katy's Country. You can find that right here on the Main Track YouTube channel, and I'll put a link to that right up above. Immediately after Clinton is the 690-foot-long bridge over Truman Lake. Here's a video I took back in 2020 of an MNA local heading into Clinton across the bridge. Now, this was the second longest bridge on the entire Sedalia subdivision. 
Well, the line's biggest and the one that gets all the attention is the lift span over the Missouri River at Boonville, which is several miles north of Sedalia. Now, granted, the Truman Bridge is nowhere near as imposing or interesting as the Boonville Bridge, but it's a cool feature nonetheless, especially for this portion of Katie's line to St. Louis. Now, I've done the measurements, and I think I'll have the space to model pretty close to the actual length, and once I've completed it, it'll be about seven feet long. Now just past the lake is the little town of Ladue. Now here you would find a grain elevator that was served by the railroad, and this was also the junction of a several mile long branch line that jutted off to the line's biggest customer. It was the Kansas City Power & Light Montrose Power Plant. Now this will be a different power plant than the smaller brick one I have for Sedalia that was in the original layout and will eventually be back on this one. Now unit coal trains ran in and out of the KCPNL plant way beyond the Katy era, actually until 2018, and that's when the facility was closed. But when I heard they were planning on tearing the place down, I went up and I shot some pictures. I definitely wish I would have had a chance to get closer up to the property and get some up and close pictures, but uh, that's hindsight now and the plant is long gone. I'll have to rely on the pictures I have and any other ones I'm able to come up with during my research. Now, I originally went back and forth on whether to even include the plant. Now, modeling it is going to be a pretty big undertaking. It's pretty big and it's going to take up a lot of real estate here on the layout. And the biggest drawback is the plant was located on a branch line several miles away and geographically north of the main line. I've been trying to stay faithful to the prototype track plan here on the layout, but I'll have to diverge from that and use my modeler's license for Ladue and the plant. So what I'll have to do is locate the facility next to and geographically south of the main line. Now, things are going to be kind of backward and very condensed right here, but this is what I'll have to do to make it work. I decided I couldn't skip the plant since it was by far the biggest and most important traffic generator for the Katy Railroad in the state of Missouri. So this wider section of the layout that I built already will include the plant and all of the yard tracks. Again, the track I have down here right now is just temporary, allowing me to run my trains back and forth. Now, the town of Ladue will be on the narrower section. It doesn't need a lot of space since it wasn't much more than a passing siding, and the elevator spur, and the switch to the plant. Now, although I'm including the Montrose power plant, I will be skipping the town of Montrose. It is an interesting town with some rail-served industries, but at this point, I only have room for one more town, and I thought the next town down the line, Appleton City, would make a better subject since it has quite a few grain elevators and an original 1870 Katy Depot. Well, the town's water tower with a red top also kind of stands out to me. Well, it's been a lot of fun planning out exactly what I'm going to be doing with my space here. Uh, it's been challenging sometimes knowing I have to cut out some of the towns and features along the way. Well, I've tried to be pretty careful in my planning because I don't want to stuff too much into my layout. I simply want to keep the general feel of the railroad with the long stretches of straight track through farmland. So I'm doing my best to resist the temptation to make things complex and make things congested by including every single industry, every little town along the way, trying to keep that open feel. And so that's the progress I have so far. I'm going to keep working on that track plan, and I'll show that to you right here on the channel uh, once I get that completed. For now, I've got some work to do on the layout. I'm looking forward to laying down some track and running some trains, even though it's only back and forth for now. That's at least something. We'll see you next time right here on the main track.